Good afternoon and welcome to our midweek word of encouragement. I hope you've had a good Wednesday. I hope that weather didn't keep you awake too much last night. We had quite a rainstorm last night. I heard that there may have been some hail in this parts of the parish and the region. I hope that didn't affect you, no wind damage, no flooding or anything of that nature. You know, we, we have a lot on our plate these days. I try not to listen to the news too much, and, but I do watch it some. And I've, I've heard the term uncertain times used quite often describing the, the pandemic that we're in. And it makes me kind of wonder just, you know, how uncertain these times really are for me personally. These are not uncertain times because I know who holds these times. And there's nothing uncertain with God. He is the most certain thing that we have in our existence right now. I want to get right into the Word, but before I do, I want to pray and ask for Holy Spirit to visit you as well as myself during this time of, of communion with Him. Father, I ask you, for your presence to rest upon myself and upon those watching this broadcast. I'm asking you, Lord, to fill these rooms, these places where they're dwelling, if it's a car, if it's a, 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 just wherever, Father, with your presence. Make me a conduit, Lord. Make me a facilitator of your word this hour. And communicate to these that are listening and watching your heart for them during this hour. Cause them to know, Lord, that there's no, nothing uncertain about this time that we live in as far as you're concerned, that you have everything in control. And I'm asking you to do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to get right into the Word. I won't keep you a long time tonight. I want to get right into the Word and looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul is writing to Timothy. Now, he has been in prison. He has been... He'd been through just all kinds of stuff. And we're calling it stress. And he's writing to Timothy about the trials and the tribulations. And Timothy was a young pastor. And he was pastoring a church that Paul had set up in Ephesus. And Timothy was under a lot of stress. Now, stress is not anything that's unfamiliar to us. We all, we're in stressful times. Paul told Timothy in another place that, that the last days would be perilous days, stressful days. And I don't know, you know what philosophy or doctrine you adhere to personally, but I believe that we are on the verge of not on the beginning or the, the first parts of the last days. Now, not the last day, but what, you know, what's commonly in the Greek called the, the end of the age. No one likes to hear that. But personally, I'm excited about it because I am anxious to see the return of Jesus Christ. I am anxious to see him set up his government upon this earth. I am anxious to see him taking rulership of the nations. And before he does, you know, there's going to be some tough times and it's going to produce a lot of stress. Now, stress is just simply a mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse circumstances, demanding circumstances. And during this, this pandemic that we're in, these are stressful times. Now, I have the privilege of talking to many of our membership of the Preparing the Way Ministries on the phone during the week. And I am so happy and glad to say that as I talk to the different individuals, the different families, I don't hear stressful times in their voices. I hear positive, uplifting voices. And I, you know, I, I, I don't hear of hard times, you know, like, oh, brother, oh, this bad. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. I don't know how long we can endure this. I don't hear that. I hear faith-filled words. I hear encouraging words. They're asking me, Pastor, how are you doing? And I'm telling them, we're doing great. We're doing fantastic. People say, are you bored? I said, no, my God is not boring. And I spend a lot of time with him during these days. 
and he's not boring. I'm boring, but he's not boring. But I don't hear the stressful tension that I'm hearing on so many unbelievers' voices these days. And I want to talk to you just briefly this afternoon about stress. Now, now stress is not a sin. It's not a biblical term, so, and it's not a sin. But what can happen is it can produce sinful behavior. Stress is something that is common to every person. If you're breathing, you endure stress. Jesus said in Matthew that in the, in the, that you, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. That means stress. You're going to have tough times in the world. And we spend so much time trying to avoid it. And Jesus is saying, you're going to have it. You don't find that in those little bread boxes, those promise boxes that you find at Christian bookstore. But it's there just to say, it's a statement, it's a promise. In the world, you're going to have stress. But how do we handle the stress? Different people turn to different remedies. Some medical remedies, some not so healthy remedies like alcohol and drug abuse and things of that nature. Now, if you're on a medication or something like that for stress, don't stop. Keep taking it. You know, if you're under medical attention for stress, then by all means, don't stop. But don't turn to some abusive, temporary solution. Because all you do is numb it for a little while and wake up with twice the stress. But I encourage you to listen to this word this morning, this afternoon and find out how Paul handled his stress. Now, Paul had a lot of stress, and he was talking to Timothy about the imprisonments and all the things that he had been through. And Paul had been through some tough, tough times. He'd been in prison more than once. He ended up dying in prison, being executed. He'd been shipwrecked and spent hours, night and day, in floating around on a log in the ocean from a shipwreck. He'd been beaten. He'd been whipped. He'd been stoned and left for dead. He had been persecuted beyond any of our wildest dreams. But listen to what he said to Timothy in verse 12 of 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. He says, For which cause I also suffer. The Amplified says, And this is why I am suffering as I do. Still, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. For I know, he says in the King James, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that that I have entrusted to him, committed to him, put in his hands until that day, against that day. The Amplified says, until that day. What day is he talking about? The day of his return. The day of Christ's return, rather. Paul is saying, I'm not moved. In another place in his writing, he says, none of these things move me. He said he called them temporary light afflictions, just temporary problems, because he had a bigger scope, a bigger picture. This pandemic that we're in is affecting everybody in the world. No one is exempt. That doesn't mean that everybody's got it or is going to get it, but it's affecting our society, the way we live, the way we operate, our government, our business aspect. I don't need to go into all that. You know how it's affecting you personally. It's affecting our children. It's age, you know, it's, it's not age restrictive. It affects all of us and it produces stress. And, and our children, they want to go to school. They want to visit their friends. They want to play. We want to visit our friends. We want to play. Some of you never thought you'd say, I need to go to work. I want to go to work. It's stressful. But Paul has got a solution. He says, I know whom I have believed in. I know him. I know him. Psalm 91, verse um, 14, 15, and 16, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. And he says, And I will set him on high because he has known my name. 
because he has known my name. When he calls upon me, I will answer. How well do you know God? Do you know him to be a God of integrity, a God of faithfulness, of God of trustworthiness? Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. I know him. I've proved him. I've tested him. I've tried him. And he has shown himself faithful under every circumstance. You say, well, Paul, you were beat. You were left for dead. You were shipwrecked. You've been in prison. You'll die in prison, Paul. I know whom I've believed in. I know him. He's got a plan in all of this. He's got a, he's got a, a, a destiny for me. He's got something in store. There is something greater than comfort in this hour. We're all looking to, to get back to normal. I don't want to get back to normal. He has more for us on the horizon if we will trust Him. If we will just trust Him, He has more in store for us than normal. I don't want to get back to normal church. I don't want to get back to normal anything. I think normal is what got us here. And yet I don't want to go around this mountain 40 years. I want to find out, Lord, where are you wanting to take us in this? Where do you want us to go in this? And I know where he wants us to go deeper, deeper and deeper into his presence, into his abiding, comforting, securing, keeping presence. Over the last couple of two or three weeks, I've talked to you about the keeping power of God. Paul knew him to be that keeper. He said, I know. I know him. I believe in him. I trust him. In every Christian's life, there is coming a time or comes a time where we've got to make up our mind to trust him. It's a decision we make. People are looking for, you know, a, a feeling, some type of unction. Some, and there is a gift of faith. But Paul said to every man has been given a measure of faith. You have faith this afternoon. You have faith today. You've got enough faith too. The measure of faith. How much? The measure. How much is that? Enough. Enough faith. You have enough faith faith to trust God. You just need to make up your mind to exercise it. I want to share a personal story, kind of humorous. But years ago, um, I went skydiving. Now, I'm an adventurer. I love to take chances sometimes. But I jumped out of a plane without a parachute. I didn't have the parachute. The guy that I was strapped to had the parachute. But I jumped out of a plane at 15,000 feet. Now, I'd never done anything like that before. I had to trust that character that I was strapped to, and he was a character, to pull the ripcord and get me down safely on the ground. Well, I'm happy to say he got me down safely. But I had to trust him. I had to make up my mind. I said, Dole, are you a fool? I guess so. I guess maybe I was, but... I'm not a fool to trust Jesus. And Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. I know whom I've trusted. I know whom I've put my faith in. You got to know him. And not a mere acquaintance, not just a familiarity, but a, a concrete, in-depth knowledge. You say, how deep? Deeper than what you are right now if you're worrying and fearful and stress and giving into stress. How do you get to know him? You spend time in this book. You spend time in his presence. You spend time in prayer. You spend time in worship. And people, we have an opportunity put before us during this pandemic that we may never have again if we don't utilize it correctly. This should be a time of habit establishing, establishing a way of life. That's what I mean. We don't want to go back to normal. Normal is busy here, busy there, hectic this, hectic that. Stress, 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 stress. And God is saying, be still and know me. Be still and get to know me. 
I will comfort you. I will sustain you. I will keep you. But you have to know me and trust me. Paul went on to say to Timothy, he said, I know whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded, I am persuaded, positively persuaded, I am convinced, Paul said, that he is able to keep, to keep, to encompass about, to hold dear to his heart that that I have committed to him, that that I have entrusted to him, that that I have laid down at his feet. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and heavy burdened, and I will give you peace. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, he says. Get to know me. See, we're addicted to busyness. We're addicted to activity. We put, that's an idol to so many people. But we can't get to know Jesus and be busy, 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 busy. We have to be still. And we have to come to Him. We have to get to know Him. We have to spend time in His presence. Turn the TV off. Turn the computer off. Put a CD on. Put something on the iPod, on your iPhone or whatever. And just worship. You say, well, I don't know anything. Go to Preparing the Way Facebook or PreparingTheWay.com and we have an archive of worship services that Aaron Doxy and, and Lacey Doxy that have done during our prayer room. They're archived. An hour of beautiful, beautiful, anointed worship. And just listen. It may be after the kids have gone to bed or before they get up in the morning time. Take advantage of this opportunity. Paul said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that that I've entrusted to him. You got to put it in his hands. You got to lay it down and put it in God's hands. What am I talking about? Whatever's got you stressed out, whatever's keeping you awake at nighttime, if it's not Jesus, it's not good. Stress is not a sin, but it's an equal opportunity destroyer. Stress can make you sick. It can eventually kill you. I think I shared one time on a, a live stream before that years ago, back in the 80s and the 90s, Oshner's Clinic did a study on the stress-related illnesses, illnesses that had their origin in stress. And at that time in the mid-80s, the late 80s, it was almost 80%. And they did a, a revision of that study in the mid-90s, 10 years later, and they said it was in the 90s that the diseases like cancer, heart failure, things like that were related to stress. Paul was stressed to the max. So what did he do? He put it before Father. He took Jesus' words to heart. Come unto me, all you who are stressed out to the max. Learn of me, he says. Take my yoke. Take my, my life upon you. Take my doctrines upon you. And you'll find rest for your souls. But we say, no, no, I, I want to try door number one first. Or door number two first. There are no other options to peace and rest but through Jesus Christ. And Paul said, I am trusting everything I am to him. And he's going to keep me. He can keep your job. He can keep your finances if you entrust them to him. He can keep your, your marriage if you put that in his hands and get to know him. He can keep your children, your grandchildren, your loved ones if you put them in His hands. Matthew chapter 6, He says, cast all of your cares, all of your burdens over onto Him because He cares for you. 
He said, what, what, what can you add to your life through worry and fear and stress in Matthew 6? He said, take no thought for tomorrow. There's enough waiting down the road for you to have to contend with then. So don't, don't worry about, am I going to have a job next week? If your company or your business lays you off, then God's got something more, maybe better for you. But he's, he has obligated himself to take care of you. So don't let stress rule your life these days. Be like Paul. He says, I know him. I know him. I trust him. Timothy, yes, I've been in prison. I am in prison. Yes, I've been shipwrecked. Yes, I'm, I've been beat. I've been stoned to death. But look, I'm still here. And I'm, I have learned when whatever state I am in, Timothy, to be content because I know him. I know him. How well do you know Father? How well do you know Jesus? Rather than be in a hurry to return to normal, let's look for more than normal. Let's look for something better than normal. Let's look for something deeper, more intimate than normal. <clears throat> Are you satisfied with a normal relationship with Jesus? I'm not. I want more. I must have more. There's a cry coming up across the land, not just America, but from the world, from the globe. We want more. Every day, common, go to church on Sunday religion is not going to cut it in these last days. We're going to have to be connected to a Savior that we know. And that when all of, the, excuse the expression, but hell is breaking loose around us, when there's pandemic here or, or something there, war here or disaster there, who are you anchored to? Jesus said in Matthew 7, he said there were two men that built houses, identical houses. One built his house on shifting sand, the other built his house on the rock. Both builders, when they completed their houses, suffered the same devastating consequences. Same storms, same winds, same floods, same pandemic. But the one on the rock stood and one on the sand fell. And he says, great was the fall. The one on the rock was founded on Jesus Christ. The cure to stress is to be anchored in Jesus. But you got to know him. You got to know him well enough to Throw that anchor deep into that rock and say, I'm secure in him. No matter what happens, come pandemic, come earthquake, come tornadoes, hurricanes, whatever. Unemployment. If they run out of all the meat in the world, I trust him. If Charmin's making toilet paper, I'm going to trust him because I know him. And I know he is able and I know he is trustworthy and I know he will keep me to the very end. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, if you don't know him intimately enough to put your hope and your trust in him, when this telecast is over, I want you to take some time to spend alone with Jesus and just be honest with him. Just tell him the truth. Just talk to him like, like I'm talking to you. And just say, Jesus, I need your help. I'm a mess. I'm stressed out to the max. And I don't know you like I need to know you. Would you grace me and help me get to know you better? I surrender everything I am to you. 
I repent of all my sins and I ask you to take control of my life. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my job, my family, my finances, my everything to you, Jesus. And I ask you to take control. Now you may not hear any thunder, see any lightning flashes, feel any goosebumps or anything like that, but Jesus hears that prayer and he will move on your behalf. Thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me this evening. I trust that this has been a blessing to you. If we can be of assistance to you, you can go to our website and contact us. We have a place for prayer requests there. And I want you to be, feel free to utilize that. We'd like to hear your testimonies too. There's a place for comments. So let us hear from you too. But in the meantime, be blessed and tune in again this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock where there's another exciting message on the book of Ephesians coming to you from our pastor, Aaron Doxey. God bless you and be safe.